Hey, do you want to blow up a load of robots? Of course you do. Assault Android Cactus is a twin-stick shooter from Witchbeam, a three-man indie studio based in Brisbane, Australia, made up of team members who worked on some major games for Midway and Sega. As the devs put it, they were bitten by the indie bug and decided to throw caution to the wind to open up their own studio and bring their visions to life. In Assault Android Cactus, you play as one of a few Android space cop things and unlock more to choose from as you play through the game. There's some kind of distress beacon on a space station, robots are killing everyone, and it's up to you and up to three friends to stop it! Apart from the standard gameplay of kill baddies to make your primary weapon stronger and the power-ups that you can get, the flow of gameplay is actually quite different from a standard twin stick. There's a refreshing selection of characters, all with their own unique way of kicking ass. Each android that you can play as or unlock has a different primary and secondary attack, so some are easier to master than others, but they're all rewarding, and none of them feel overpowered. Speaking of segues, there are three pickups that you'll find that can be considered power-ups, and one that's more of a utility. Firepower gives you two robo-drone buddies that seriously increase your damage output and look rad as hell. Speed gives you wings and lets you zip around the map, then Shutdown, the utility, functions as an EMP, but only for the bad guys. Don't ask why, it's, it's science. During a stage, your android's battery will constantly be draining. Once it's empty, it's game over and you need to try again. Every battery you kill has a chance of dropping a fourth kind of pickup, a battery. Which I guess technically counts as a power-up because that's what it does oh well. Thankfully, the game never really screws you with RNG, so while it's possible for your battery to die, it's rare that you'll be in a situation where you can't get to a battery pickup in time. This makes the mechanic a really nice way to keep the pressure on the player without ever letting them get outright shafted by a die roll. Due to the pure chaos of gameplay, it's pretty easy to lose track of your own health, especially since the sounds made when you get hit blend in with the sounds of combat, and the controller vibration is hard to notice in general. Though death through HP isn't the end, it's a pretty major setback at later parts in a stage, causing your weapon to downgrade almost completely and dropping your score multiplier. Better damage feedback is important, I think. Maybe a stronger controller vibration or an on-screen flash of some sort would work really nicely to make it clear that I just got smacked in the face. Every design in Assault Android Cactus is charming as hell, and in fact they are downright adorable. This goes for the baddies too. Each android has its own personality that comes through in their animations, voice, and writing. They each have different dialogues with the bosses too. In some cases, you get a bit of the backstory, but either way, it's just a really nice touch to build personality for something that you're just using to shoot other things. The weapons, and by extent playstyle, differ from android to android. Most can play well on their own, but others would do well to have some backup. Thanks to load times being quick, there's nothing really holding you back from trying various characters on each stage to see what works best for you and to see if you can get a better score. It'd be nice to be able to create my own android, or at least select a primary and secondary for it from the already existing plethora of weapons. I imagine there's some pretty nuts combinations that could be used. There are four game modes present in Assault Android Cactus at the time of this recording. There's a campaign, a handcrafted set of levels and challenges, organized through a really fun navigation screen. In each area, you'll play through a handful of stages with massive amounts of enemies, playing more like a wave-based survival shooter. And then, at the end of every area, there is a single boss fight that's far more akin to your standard bullet hell. It makes for a really awesome change of pace, and it has a sense of finality to each area. Plus, they're hard as balls. Infinity Drive is your standard last-until-you-die mode. The stage will change between waves, the waves will get harder, and you'll probably sweat as you try to get that battery when your screen is filled with RoboBeats! Daily Drive is a random seed given out to all players and it's different every day. Everybody gets one shot at it. Are you a bad enough droid to beat all the robots and get the highest score? Boss Rush is Boss Rush. That's exactly what it is. There are bosses, and they rush at you, and you die, and it's awesome. There are also some unlockables that you can get. After each round of play, whether in the campaign or a side mode, you'll get some credits based on how well you play. You can use these credits in an extra options shop. These unlocks are crazy fun, and they really mix up the way the game is played. For example... All of this is wrapped up and tied together with a brilliant pounding soundtrack by Jeff Van Dyke, whose work you may be familiar with from Hand of Fate or Alien Isolation. The music serves really well to get you into the zone and into a groove, and if that's not rad enough to roast your toast, Jeff is working on a dynamic version of the soundtrack that will raise the hype levels as the stages get more and more intense. You can get Assault Android Cactus on Steam for about 15 bones. I haven't been able to find a place to buy friends to play with it, but that probably exists somewhere. Maybe Craigslist? 
Oh well, I'll see you guys next time. That's all for this episode of Indie Bites. Thank you for joining. If you enjoyed this episode, please leave a like and subscribe for more. Be sure to check out our website, pixelattack.net, for more articles and videos that I've done, as well as what others have done. If you're interested in seeing a more casual side of the stuff that I do, check out my personal YouTube channel, linked down in the description. And lastly, if you have any indie games that I should check out for Indie Bites, leave a comment below or shoot me a message on Twitter. My handle is at 4 h Bye!